I just came by to stir your soul up a bit. Put on your seatbelt. Get ready. This ride could have some turbulence. guys, I'm Tabitha McNeil. This is The Next Stop, an actor's journey to success. And today's special guest is X Mayo, or should we be calling her Emmy nominated? Huh? No, no please. <laughs> no, stop it. Emmy nominated X Mayo. So X, tell us about yourself, man. Um, just like who I am? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, well, as she said, my name is X Mayo. I am a uh, Afro Latina. I am Black and Mexican from Los Angeles, yeah. um, California. Yay. Yes, mm -hmm. I throw up a gang sign, but I don't know who's gonna be watching this. Thing. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I am a I'm a servant first. Like everything I do is of servitude to serve my community. It's uh, all based to give God the glory. Um, I um, if we're gonna get technical with it, uh, you know, I'm an actor, writer, and a producer, um, comedian. Um, yeah, and I do all of the things that I mentioned. That's awesome. So, X, when, um, how is it like being an Emmy-nominated writer right now, especially as an Afro-Latina? You know, you want this, like, really great answer, you know, <laughs> that it's just like, you know, like, yeah. it's in it my sound, okay, I am grateful, right? Yeah. It's, it's great, right? But, um... I've never been itching to receive white people's praise. Yeah. So I'm more proud of who made the potato salad. <laughs> like, yeah. what I'm rocking right now. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. I didn't get any money for that nomination. Oh. Like, you know, I, I, I'm happy because Trevor deserved it. Yeah, our show definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm happy because we're getting our like just do like they gave Trevor hell when he first started mm -hmm. and come a long way from you know. Hold on, let me close this thing right here. Okay. That's my blinds, Jesus. <laughs> my blinds. Okay. Um. Hold on, wait. Let me move this thing right here. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy that, you know, we were nominated for a show, we were nominated for a director, we're not in so many categories, like our writers, some writers have been there, you know, this is my first nomination, but there are other writers who never got to get nominated as well, and have been there way longer than me, you know, where they were Trevor first started, so I'm very happy at that, and I do think that representation is important, like, I don't, I haven't looked at all the categories, but I do believe that I'm the only Afro-Latina that's nominated uh, in the uh, variety sketch category for writing. Yeah. Whatever. So yes, that's a big deal, but I think like the work that I do for my community, um, it just, it, it, it holds a lot of weight for me. Yeah. And I would love to win so Trevor gets more shows so him and the rest of us can make more money. That's awesome. <laughs> our families during this very difficult time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So speaking to that, um, can you tell the people why your Instagram is called $80 and a suitcase? Yes, because I was poor. <laughs> New York, like, I truly come from the bottom. So when you come from the bottom, everybody will fucking understand why I say I need money. I need my, I need money. money. I need pesos. I need <laughs> listen. I'll take a euro. Yeah, I mean, cheddar cheese, all that. <laughs> give me the money. Yeah. Um. So eight dollars in a suitcase. Like I, you know, came to New York on vacation and just stayed. You know, I've said this, told the story multiple times about how you know I just had quit acting. Um. And really. Um. 
I had took some redirection and mm -hmm. it, it was very important because as a black woman, I cannot afford to show up on set and not know everything. Yeah. So the break that I took was essential. I didn't even realize it at that time. I quit acting because I thought it wasn't for me. I was tired of being rejected. I wasn't black enough for some people. I wasn't Latina enough for some people. Like people are just like, and even Afro Latina, I know that term is what everybody uses. I'm not Latin. I don't speak Latin. I just, I usually say black and Mexican. Like yeah. that's why I am. My dad's black and mom is Mexican. That's just yeah. what it is. But, um, I wasn't Hispanic enough for a lot of these casting directors, a lot of these roles. So I was like, okay, fuck y'all. And I would just go do, you know, everything behind the scenes, which ended up making me a far better producer because although I'm not a master at all of those things, you can't fucking play me. Mm -hmm. you know, like I know how long it takes to set up a shot. I know about editing. I know about all that. And if you need, and if you want to cut the fuck up, like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I can do it. Yeah. And that's it. Um, so I, so yeah, so when I came to New York, I was doing makeup. I had no intentions on acting and had like a life-changing experience when I saw Motown the Musical and the director, um, his Larry Powell, who we both know, yes. my friend, he uh, called me on to the stage uh, after and we were like meeting the whole cast and everything and the director for Motown the Musical was like, you live with fear, you have a responsibility to live your dream and you have to do it now. And those words um, I've kept and has kept me my whole journey to this day when I get discouraged I realize I go back to that saying and what he said about me having a responsibility no one ever talked to me like that no one ever told me how much weight it holds and that's why I am so adamant about other people fulfilling their dreams because we all have a responsibility to live yeah and sense of urgency when he said you have to do it now and at that point I had eight dollars in a suitcase that's all I had that's wow that's amazing that is that is so inspiring yeah so my next question is how did the idea of who made the potato salad start and why during this time it's so important for creators to put out their own content um who made the potato salad came about because i was uh over not uh going to quality shows <laughs> it was just like this is not promoted well it's not packaged well coming from theater an actor a storyteller going into comedy a lot of comedy shows get a lot of um um how do i say like they get a lot of passes on being you know low quality uh uh promotion organization talent because, like, it's comedy. It's more funny. It's like, no, this sh what the fuck? This yeah. is your thing. Like, this is a show. Like, every time I put up Who Made the Potato Salad, in my mind, it was at it was at the garden. Yeah. Like, that's how I promote it. That's how I do everything. From Unsung Heroes, you know, the show that I did with um, um, Inovi, um, everything that I've done. Like, I, I treat it like that. Like, my first improv show, I look back and I laugh, like, I was promoting and telling people and it was at the Creek in the Cave and I was just doing a little one-off show, but I promoted it. I was telling people, I was texting people like it was a Staples Center because that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Like I don't, I, I don't feel like I need to get to the Staples Center to treat it like, you feel me? Like, yeah, I treat it with excellence. Mm -hmm. So it came about a mixture of that and like going to see other shows that were not technically comedy and they just did whatever the fuck they wanted and it worked and i just kept going to see these shows and i was so inspired and i was just like oh i could just do whatever i want because i was like trying to play into these white people rules of what yeah. comedy is and i was like nah fuck that i really want to party I, i'm about experiences i love experiences like in restaurants in in like i love like experiences in theater where like you're a part of the scene like i love it being like, damn like you know, so I was like, I want a fucking party and I want a cookout and I want comedy. I want you to feel like, damn, I went to a cookout and a comedy show. Yeah. And so I got to the drawing board and um, I, I uh, at UCB, they have this thing called Sketch Cram where a sketch comedy show is made in a day. So I took that blueprint, like, oh, okay, we can make a sketch comedy show in a day, but ours will have people of color. Ours will have dancers. Ours will, well, as soon as you arrive, you'll have food. We're going to do communion and they're going to be shots, you know, like there's going to be a DJ. So 
it's going to be unique to me. And that was, the first one was November 2017. So we've been around three years now. Wow, that's beautiful. Again, that is so inspiring for people who are just like, you know, when is the right time to put out my content? It's like, it's right now. Somebody is watching you. Yeah, I think it is. And I think even now it's so important. Like for me, you know, I have been, I, I got back to the drawing board. Like I'm launching my collective intention on August 30th. And yes. and I were providing resources and events to aid in the healing of the black community and put our joy in center stage. Like we're doing that and potato salad will be coming back in the fall. Um, but I did take a break because I've been working so much. I've been at this, I've been producing since I was 18. I, I shifted from plays to comedy, but I've been producing, you know, like, and then I was even doing pilots for all these, like, you know, all these women that want to be uh, reality show queens or whatever, like, they had to get their pilots done. And me and my little uh, uh, film squad from film school went and shot them. So I've been at this for a long time. So I took a break during quarantine, I'm like, I'm not doing shit. Like, I, just, <laughs> I never get to rest. I never get to just be like, be. I never get to have clear thought. Like, it's always going, going, going. And I still technically am using that brain because I'm working, right? The Daily mm -hmm. Show on home. But if you have been sitting on your ass, and even during this time, you need to be fucking getting at something. Like, I don't know. All the actors out there that's just like, I don't write. Okay, well, then you won't act. Say that one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> Woo! You don't write? That's okay. No, so don't write. Don't mm -hmm. write. Okay, and just keep waiting. Yeah. Because okay. everything is, especially now that everything is through Zoom, it's just kind of like, we have to be the editor. We have to be the director, the producer, like the cinematographer. It's crazy. So I think that is so awesome that you're putting out your own content, but you're also being mindful of your rest. Um, and yes. Yes. yes, we need to rest. Like the greats rest just as hard as they work. <laughs> like they know how to rest. And also too, like, well, how can I, I mean, I took a break from social media for almost two months because I'm like, how can I help anybody when my cup is empty? Like, right. When, the, when, when like in church, we say like your cup runneth over, like it overflows. It means er anything that comes out of the cup is for y'all. Mm -hmm. But my cup needs to be full for X, period, yeah. period. And so it's just kind of like Issa, she gave us the blueprint. She said, fuck y'all. I make all sure my and all shit. Now what? Hi, bye. I got my own production company. Now, you know, Insecure is number one thing, smoking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's doing pop-up events. She got her record label. She's producing Black Lady Sketch. Like, she's giving y'all, she gave us the keys. This is it. Mm -hmm. So, you want to sit there? You don't want to write? It's okay. It's like, you're going to be sitting there and, like, you are not Michael B. Jordan. You are not Denzel Washington. You are not Kerry Washington. They're not itching, throwing shit at you, trying to, no, you're not. So you're just going to stay right there. Dropping the bombs today. Yes, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the collective intention. And can you speak a little bit more about that and why this was um, such an amazing idea to have right now? Yeah, so the collective intention actually was the idea from my assistant, and he's also co-producing the event, Rajan. Yeah. He's incredible, uh, an awesome um, person to have on the team and is a good friend as well. Um, we've now, he's been my assistant now a little over a year, and he is so good. Um, but we were trying to figure out, like, what is my production company's um, response to the census killings of black people like what is it and I needed to step away and I was like well maybe we could do like an event I want to do some more mental health this and that and he was just like what if like a collective intention I was like yes it could kind of be like in the vein of like communion as well because you'll see the video I, I dropped the video but then I had to delete it because Instagram was playing games um and then also, like, one of the time zones was messed up that uh, one of my followers so graciously told me. So, but you'll see in, like, the whole image of it is just, like, a cup and, like, peace, love, unity, all these things being poured in um, because that's what we want to do. And we're going to be pouring into the Black community via events and providing resources. And each week we'll have a different theme. So 
we're going to post like um, things that have to deal with mental health, wellness, and spirituality one week. The, another week will be about like just like activism petitions and certain things. Another week will be uh, just about joy. So about different like cooking, um, uh, different chefs that you can follow and stuff like that. And the events will coincide with that. So we're doing that for the month of September. So yeah, we'll be pretty busy, but I just wanted to be like, you know, although it has slowed down for white people, you know, mm -hmm. white people have gotten what's called allyship fatigue. <laughs> they literally have been saying Black Lives Matter for 60 days. Mm -hmm. They're Sorry. like, we're done now. We're done. We did our part. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, but we can't stop. And I've never stopped and I will never stop. So it's like, well, what can I do to contribute um, this? Because we're all just trying to do our part. And it's my little small way with the little platform that I do have to um, provide some good and help with, with some healing in my community. Wow, that is amazing. And so when can they tune into this? Will this be on Zoom or? It's going to be on IG Live. Okay, gotcha. So there will be a few people that will be uh, uh, chosen, pre-chosen before the event to um, join me on my live and tell me what is their pre-written intention that they have that they're going to do. Like, what is something specifically going to focus on for the month of September? Because we're going to be supporting all Black lives forever, for eternity. Yeah. Um, this will not stop. Um, but you know, somebody may have an intention to, you know, maybe work on their own internal racism that they didn't know that they have. And you know, you could be racist and be black, you know, like that's something that I'm educating myself about with Ibram Kinde with his book, um, anti-racism and talking about that and certain things like that. I was just like, oh, okay. I didn't know, uh, that that could be a thing because for so long it's like no black people can't be racist because to be racist you have to have a position of power we would never be white mm -hmm. but he talks about it so much so uh you could be black and you could be someone that is you know prejudiced towards um uh poorly dressed black people or you know or those that are not conventionally educated you know mm -hmm. or you could be someone that comes from the hood like I come from and you automatically judge someone who's a graduate from Harvard and you think that they talk white, which the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. You know, what is your intention to aid in unity, to aid in your, or, or you, it may just be about you. You may just be like, my intention as a black woman is to take better care of myself. Like I'm gonna do like this thing every morning for the month of September, whatever your intention is. But it's a collective intention. So we just all want everyone to be on one accord, like one band, one sound. And it's going to be launched on August 30th. And every Monday in September, you will see resources there that you can share. And then on, um, we're going to have a few events. I don't know how many for that month because we're trying to lock in the people. But there will be a few events happening um, on Wednesdays in the month of September as well. Wow, that is amazing. I think we really do need that right now. There's not a lot of resources out there for us all the time. And so, especially having your platform. Yeah. And stuff like that. And that's why my team and I, I wanted us to really find, like there's this group called Prison Feminism that you don't feel a lot of people don't know. And there's this young black man who was in there for seven years and he uh, is was teaching about feminism while he was incarcerated. He came out and now he goes to prisons and he equips people with the tools to learn about, to teach other people about feminism. So he's like teaching people in jail and now they are teaching. So it's a domino effect. Yeah. This is a cat calling and sexual assault because you have, you have a lot of men that grew up in a very like sexually deviant household in the hood. You yeah. know, they were, that people were molesting them and having sex. Like, there, me and my friend were having the conversation. Like, we talked to different black men that come from where we come from. It was like, what age did you lose your virginity? He's just, they're just like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, like I had sex because I wanted to, or like, like it's so yeah. common mm -hmm. with their cousins, with their aunts, with the nanny, with the next door neighbor. It's like, it is so common. So it's just kind of like, we need to have these conversations for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. That is so amazing. So we, we are down to our last two questions. Now that the 
industry is kind of shifting a little bit. You know, people are saying they're going to give us all these things. They're going to hire the right people. Um, what are some things that you would like to see improved in this industry? Um, I mean, there's so much. I mean, also, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Like, I haven't seen any change. Yeah, right. That's very true. So... It's like how people are just like, yeah, the what guild is blazing. It's time to pitch those black ass shows. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They pick, they pick, uh, you know, they have their three every time. And right now the three is Nina, Tiffany, Haddish, and Issa Rae. Yeah. So they have their three and that's what they do. And it's not on them and it's no shade to those women. They did not do that. And I absolutely want them to get opportunities. Like representation is so important. And these are three like unique different black women you know they all look the same and they're none of them are light skin you know like that's important but what i'm saying is that that's that's we have no control over that i mean what they need to do uh i would love to see happen i'm optimistic about it but i'm also a realist they need to give up power very true yeah very true. Really step down and do that so you know, until then, I'm going to continue to do my shit. And if you're, if you want to recognize that, that's what's up. And you gonna give me some money for it. Mm-hmm. Um, a big old check. Blood, sweat, and tears in everything I do. Yeah. So, I mean, I would like to see that change, and more so. I mean, I would love to see my community not pressed to get approval, praise, or acceptance from white Hollywood, like. I'm not pressed for an Oscar. I'm not pressed for a nomination. Like, Potato Salad is going to get made. I'm going to be in a movie because I'll write it and I'll shoot it and I'll like go fund me and raise the money. Like, I don't, I'm going to be in everything that I want to be in. I'm going to be in a rom com. I'm going to be in a horror film. I'm going to produce a sketch comedy. Like, I don't. So, I would love for my community to be more focused on that and circling our dollars amongst each other and hiring people that we know and just doing it like i'm over i'm over i'm over y'all i'm over like begging holly like no no that is that is exactly what i think a lot of people need to hear nowadays it's kind of like i you know this is like the perfect time to get casted because we're black and they want us and it's kind of like nah, they kind of don't like they don't it's just it's for play disgusting. Mm -hmm. it's disgusting yeah. that even this level of tokenism happened because a black man was murdered yeah on camera by a white guy yeah that Breonna Taylor was innocently murdered Ahmaud Aubrey was like it's so fu it's like It's disgusting. Yeah, definitely. It's disgusting. Because we've been dying. We've been dying. We've been dying on camera, not on camera. They didn't even count our fucking bodies. You know, let's not go back to the 1800s. But who knows how many of us. They don't even have record numbers. They, they died. They didn't even report us. Put them, put them in a dish somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, like they literally had what was called nigga barbecues. Right? It was an event. Yeah. You know, I, so you want to you want to give me a little under five on Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> like I don't know this level of tokenism, and I and let me tell you something. Any black person that's getting their opportunities right now, get your bag, sis. I'm not mad at you. I'm not telling you that you're not supposed to. I'm just saying, just literally looking at it, it is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting <clears throat> because there's people that are creating their own content and then there's other people who are like, yo, I'm booked. And it's kind of like, right now, sure. <clears throat> but in a couple of weeks or even two days, they could fire you and choose somebody else. So. And it looks good. You know, it's damage control. And I think like anybody that's getting an opportunity right now, get your bag, sis, get your credit, sis, because the only reason why I'm able to get as many opportunities as I can now it's not only because of God, but because I'm at the Daily Show, right? Like, people mm -hmm. are like, this bitch is uh, vouched for. She's been vetted. She knows what the fuck she's doing, yeah. you know? So God bless, 
you know, Juven, who got me hired there, who's a producer, and Trevor, who was like, yes, I'm going to give this bitch a shot, you know? But that don't happen. That was all God. Like, I had moved out. I was about to come back to L.A. I had to call my mama to give me an Uber ride on her credit card because I had 67 cents in my account. I didn't have no fucking money for a Metro card. Yeah. The reason why I even am in an apartment in L.A. that I can afford it is because of where I work. I'm part of maybe 10% of niggas who can do that right now. Yeah. It is not common. Like, my life is truly, truly been touched by God. Yeah, it has, yeah. So it's just like anybody who's getting the opportunity right now to get your bags is do it, save your money, and be writing and be creating. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as, you know, the dust settles, because it's kind of already settling. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, okay, we don't feel bad about being racist anymore. You need to have something ready to pitch. Yeah. So just keep working. That's beautiful. So my last question is this. Could you drop some words of wisdom to close us out? I feel like you always have something just to be like, woo! Tabitha, that's too much pressure. I'm not surprised. Like, do you know how much I read? Because I don't know a lot. Oh, no, it's okay. Drop your favorite whatever. I don't know. That's why I'm in books and podcasts <laughs> and Instagram posts. Like I'm, and I'm in therapy every week. No. Um, well, I will say something that. Uh, so I, I uh, um, do the daily Stoic journal. Right. And Stoicism was something that I didn't really partake in. I really was against all philosophy because I grew up very, you know, she's Pentecostal. Mm, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you mean philosophy? Okay. What is not- that word? Yep. <laughs> and that's a mystical twistical. That's Where's the oil? Christ. Okay, that is against the body of Christ. So, <laughs> you know, now that we, I've like kind of abandoned that whole like religious rhetoric or whatever. Yeah. Like he, like I am still a believer and I love God, of course. And he is flowing all through my life, yeah. period. But I am far more open. Like I am so open. There are so many religions that I take from and learn from. And I have homies that are atheists. Like, like that doesn't mean that I can't learn from you. And I'm so open. And that makes yeah. me a better person and artist. But um, in the Daily Stoic Journal, which I encourage anyone to cop, is that, you know, every day, you know, there's a mantra and stuff like that. And it truly be reading you. Like, it's like, it's a read. Like, you don't have your shit together. Like, I'm like, oh, every time I read, I'm like, damn. <laughs> and Stoicism literally is just all about accepting what you can control. Mm-hmm. So it's great. A lot, a lot of their, and the guy, Ryan Holiday, who wrote it, he was on a podcast. And he mentioned a lot of the stoic mantras rightly aligned with Christianity. Hmm. So it's not like, it's not like you're going to read it. So for all my Christians, all my believers out there, you're going to go to day one and they're not going to say bow down to the death. Like it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's all good logic advice. But one thing it said, I closed the book. I didn't even open it for a month because I just had to sit with that. But the, the stoic mantra, it says, are you content? with being clueless about the things that do not matter. Hmm. And that has set me, because sometimes I get, be like, fuck this white man getting this, this is fucked up, woo 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 But it's, it's the part about being clueless. You don't even need to know, because it does not matter. And you know, wherever my thoughts are, that's where my heart will be. So yeah. I don't need to lose my joy, because that's my strength. Right? So I can't be sitting here focused on what the fuck you're doing because it really don't matter. It, it, Tabitha, it does not matter. Right. It really don't matter. I've had people be shady. I've had people be jealous. I've had people, and I define jealousy as someone counting my blessings and not their own because we truly are all blessed. Let's be clear. But it's just like, why, ask, why be concerned? Like, And I'm not saying like this, like there's so many people like that. I'm just saying in my lifetime. Like, yeah. I'm not that... Uh, popping of a person that I just have haters and stuff. like people I don't even have for for the most part that I know I'm cool with everybody I don't even have people like that in my energy in my space in my orbit but that that 
mantra like are you content with being clueless about the things that do not matter that was so good to me and um one thing td jakes because i listen to td jakes every morning that's kind of like my meditation mm-hmm. i used to do a guided meditation on the calm map but since um everything's happening within our community i said i need that old i need Oh, I need no I, guided meditation from this white woman. You're very nice. <laughs> good. But mm-hmm. I need to speak to my heart. Holy spirit. I need some breathing. Like, <laughs> I, I need that. that. Yeah. Point. So mm-hmm. I've been listening to, because I am a leader, right? And I'm like the CEO of my company and mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm responsible for people, you know. And I just have two people on my team, but that's a lot. You know, two people that trust me, that are like, hi, I'm depending on you to not act the fucking fool for me, you know continue to do good, good shit so his uh um message on leadership whoo it's so good and one thing that he said that i would encourage anybody out here because we're all creators and we're all like the ceos of our own lives and doing our own shit and just it's great advice just logic advice he said that you know our job as leaders is to clear the debris in an unemotional way and why would we get emotional about a problem we were sent to fix? So um, that helps me every day. Ooh, yes. Why would I get emotional? He talks about when Lazarus, when they called on Jesus to go to see Lazarus, he didn't be like, oh, like, I don't know about that, Lazarus. He knows, he said, no, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to get him up. Yeah, I'm going to lift him, you know? And then um, another thing he says that I love is that He's just like, as the leader, you know, I'm thinking in 360 degrees, but you have old other leaders. They're not, they're not the leader, but they're a leader that you have helping you, but their think their job is to think in 90 degrees. So you can't get upset when they disagree with you on something because you're thinking about 360 and they're only thinking about 90. Mm-hmm. But then if you go down to their level, now you micromanaging and you're doing their job and your job is supposed to be like overseeing everything. So that's been some great advice that I've been putting in memory to help me as I move forward and grow. And I believe that God has allowed me to deal with conflict and with um, being let down and with controversy at this level because it happens at this level and this level and this level and this level. It doesn't stop. Yeah. But as I grow, things that used to bother me don't bother me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Guys, it's not Sunday. It's <laughs> definitely Thursday. <laughs> oh, when Sunday comes, Woo! I see Jesus. Yeah. Oh, amen. Woo! It's not even. It's not even Sunday, y'all. <laughs> Where is the plate? Where is the collection plate? Yes. yes. Wow. Don't me, child, you better give it to Brianna Taylor. Give it to these. Black Lives Matter, donate. Yes, 100%. So you guys, this has been such an amazing experience just to interview the amazing ex. Amazing. So amazing. So you guys, I am Tabitha McNeil. This is The Next Up, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye, guys.